What's up, my friends? John Baruti here from... Oh, Jesus. Baruti success. Sorry. I just get too carried away doing that. I think I just hurt my back. Sorry. Baruti success. Tonight, 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 we are talking about why traditional marketing is not dead. What? What? Sally, stop it. Stop it. I mean, it's the intro. We'll see you inside. So John, you're here to tell us that traditional marketing, paper, newspaper, TV, cable, all those old telemarketing. Telemarketing? What are you talking about? What, how old are you? A little old. You're telling us that that stuff's not dead? That's right, Carl. Not dead. Hey, Sally. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, okay, Sally. I'm fixing my hair. Jesus. So, traditional marketing not dead. What does that mean, John? What does it mean? So in the day and age of digital marketing, Facebook ads, Google ads, all of this wonderful technology, right? Instagram and TikTok and all the wonderful things that are out now. You're telling me that traditional marketing I could still do well with? Yes, my friends. Yes. And here's why. Number one, you're going to reach a different audience. What does that mean, a different audience? Well, Sally, Grandpa Joe over there. Hey, Grandpa Joe, we got a new, new character. Sorry, new character. Grandpa Joe's back there. Okay, Grandpa Joe, he doesn't even know what a smartphone is. He looks at his phone and says, this thing ain't smart. It's stupid. Yes, Grandpa Joe, he doesn't know what tell... Stop with the telemarketing. He doesn't know what social media is. He doesn't know what Instagram and TikTok, TikTok, he can't even say TikTok. He doesn't know what any of those things are. Grandpa Joe is still in the passenger seat looking out the window at the billboards going by. Grandpa Joe is still getting the patch paper mm -hmm, down the street at the local bodega and he's reading it along with possibly the local newspaper. Yes, I'm telling you, they still exist, right? He's still watching cable news, Grandpa Joe. We love Grandpa Joe, by the way. He is still a demographic that we want to advertise to. How do we get to Grandpa Joe? And let me tell you something. I'm not, I, you know, I'm, I know I'm gray. I know, I know, I know I'm so gray, but I'm not that, that old. I'm old, but not that, that old, right? So my friends who again are not that, that old relatively, um, are Gen Xers, right? We are Generation X. Grandpa Joe, he is a baby boomer, right? But even my generation, not everybody is on the Facebook or the TikTok or the scrollers. I am I'm a little addicted to the scrolling, but not everybody is. I'll, I'll talk to, I'll be in a, um, a dinner date or, you know, along with a bunch of friends. And, hey guys, did you see the new TikTok? TikTok, what are you talking about? We don't go on that. Or did you see that advertisement on, on Facebook? I, I don't even go on that. Social media, no, no, my, my kids' kids go on that. Listen, 50s, it happens a lot, more than you anticipate. Now, that being said, yes, there are still a lot of Gen Xers and even baby boomers that are on the social media, on the smartphones and all that stuff. I'm not saying they're not, but there is a good portion of people that either are not on it as much, don't live by it, aren't addicted to it, you know? And so the old traditional way of marketing is a terrific way to get to those people that nobody is doing anymore. Not that many people are doing. You, from what used to be the norm, maybe five, six, seven, eight, nine years ago, right, is dead now as far as not that many people are using it. So you, Sally, you, Carl, go and use those old school things. Go and do your um, mailers. Go and put um, flyers on people's cars. Go and ask the local news station. Maybe you can barter with them. Maybe you don't have to spend the 
ton of money. And again, if you're a restaurant or a coffee house or something, or even a flower shop, maybe you can barter. Maybe if you're a flower shop or even let's say a dry cleaner, you can go down there and say, listen, I'll give away gift cards to my establishment for you to give to your to, um, listeners as gifts. This way you get on the air. They're giving away gifts because they're looking for people. You know, the, the, the way these radio stations are still holding on to people, you know, again, it's getting less and less. So they might want to barter with you and you don't have to put up so much money as you used to. The newspapers, I don't know why. I don't understand why. They're still ridiculously high with ads. But that being said, you can test them. You can try the local big newspaper and put an ad in and see if you get a response and kind of a b test a b test is a newer term we do it with facebook ads google ads instagram ads we'll try this ad which is a and we'll try this ad which is b and see which one does better you can do the same thing with a newspaper this week you put this ad in next week you put that ad in you see how many responses you get as far as which ad to continue to run but what i'm trying to tell you is all of these old school ways you can take advantage of them and you can be the person that's getting that audience that new marketing, new social marketing is not going to. Number two, building brand awareness, right? Again, let's talk about old school. Let's talk about banners on the highway. Let's talk about, um, uh, again, uh, going to cable um, cable advertisement. I have a dear friend that I've worked with forever, uh, Anthony Calandras of Calandras Bakery, and I don't work with them anymore. I sold my business, so I don't buy bread from them anymore, but we worked together for the longest time, and I still um, talk to him, talk to his family, and several years ago, I was pushing them to do more digital marketing. And they're like, John, that's not where our customers are. You know, we have an old school bakery. Um, and, you know, they, they advertise on billboards. They advertise in uh, sporting stadiums. And I was like, what are they doing? That doesn't make any sense. And the reality of it is, is it makes more sense than you think. First of all, they are doing a lot more digital marketing, right? So, but they're still doing the old school marketing as far as billboards. Their customers, the old school, they're up in Newark, New Jersey, the old school uh, people that are buying Italian bread are still, like I said, the passengers in the seat looking up at the billboards when they come down to the shore and they see Calandra's Bakery. That means a lot in brand awareness, right? It is a difference between, again, you could see it on the phone, but when you see a local place like that on an advertisement like that, it does build brand awareness. And to be honest, um, you know, I probably, I'll, I'll, I'll admit I was probably wrong. They should still do that type of advertising. They advertise in the stadium. Thousands of eyes are on, you know, when, when we go to the Devils game, I see the Calandra's banners going around the stadium. Again, it, it caters to a clientele that isn't on their cell phones, that isn't on their smartphones, that isn't on their computer. This is a, 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 a clientele that is still very viable, still has a lot of money, still are great customers to cater to. Now, that being said, I don't think you should only do old school advertising. You need to do it in addition to doing digital, to doing social, um, because you get so much bang for your buck in the digital and social arena. But that being said, peppering in these old school ways, newspaper ads, um, cable television ads, billboards, mailers to people's houses. These are ways that you can beat your competition because people aren't really even thinking about that kind of advertisement anymore. Number three, providing tangible marketing materials, okay? so. Again, digital is terrific. It's on your phone, everybody has, your, has their phones. But that being said, actually having brochures, actually having flyers, actually having cards, actually having marketing materials, it's important, right? Handing those things out, having them at your establishment that people can, can take. Do they get thrown out? Yes, they do. Do, if you buy magnets and people take magnets, and let's say our ice cream store down at 
the lava let um, shore. Magnets, people put them on their refrigerators. People rent out the houses multiple times. Well, if it's a magnet on the refrigerator, how many families are gonna be in that house that summer? Four, five, six families? They all get to see that magnet with our ice cream store or our coffee house or our restaurant or our dessert house, whatever it is, or our dry cleaners or whatever we have magnets old school advertising it still works you still can use it in addition to everything else the social media and the um, digital marketing as far as listen there's different rules and regulations as far as door knockers putting um door knockers on people's doors and putting flyers in their windshields and put i know you can't put flyers in people's mailboxes right because that's a federal offense but you know, doing that old school stuff, going and getting some high school kids and having them hand out flyers or brochures or door knockers, which you are allowed to do. You're allowed to put door knockers on people's doors, right? If you are a local pizzeria, uh, again, dry cleaner, um, plumbing, you know, plumbing, uh, heating and cooling, whatever you are, and you're, you're a local place and you want the people around you, the close people to use you it's it's the best bang for your buck because you're not sending your trucks all over willy-nilly it's right down the street using that old school flyer on cars door knockers on doors it works right it no it does not okay it does not replace again digital marketing it doesn't replace i can do a facebook ad and reach 10,000 people way easier than i could hand out 10,000 flyers no doubt but that being said right most people that have local businesses don't even know the local business exists they don't even know so if you go and you put door and they're like oh hv where, where is this guy oh he's right down the street you know my air conditioner's having a problem i'll give him a call right power washing guy oh you know my house has got mold on it let me give this guy a call oh automotive detailing yeah my car these are the type of things i'm saying put them on cars people will call in addition to doing your digital and social media and again number this is number four right i'm gonna i'm gonna keep saying it digital marketing social media marketing and old school traditional marketing make up your marketing plan with all of these things a lot of things can and it used to be called guerrilla marketing right there was a book guerrilla marketing there was um, uh, a course guerrilla marketing and guerrilla marketing which is old school traditional marketing uh, again um, sending out um, uh, letters doing direct mail uh, again putting uh, those squiggly things out front of your store, having a gorilla dress, dressing up in a gorilla suit and standing outside with signs. These things actually still work. Again, do they work as well as, uh, as, as social media and digital marketing? No, but what it does do, it separates you from the next guy. How many people are trying to do Facebook ads, Instagram ads, come to my restaurant, come to my deli, come to, yeah, yeah, we're all saying the same thing. But if your deli has a gorilla out on the main avenue saying, come in today and get a free potato salad, whatever it is, right? You're gonna stand out from the next guy. Is it silly? Yes. Is it memorable? Yes. Is it crazy? Yes. Remember that wackadoo guy? Crazy Eddie, my prices are super low. Remember him? You know what everybody can't get out of their mind? Crazy Eddie. As soon as I say that, you know exactly who I'm talking about, right? The guy was insane, and that was his big thing. The prices are insane. Remember that? When you're a little crazy, when you're a little crazy and you separate yourself from the competition, yes, it's goofy. Yes, it's over the top. Yes, they're gonna remember you over the next guy, right? Again, oh, there's the gorilla this week. Honk the horn, wave out the side. Oh, it's Elmo this week. Hey, Elmo. Oh, it's the giraffe. Hey, it's Jeffrey the giraffe. These are things that are memorable. 
right? These are things, these old school, crazy marketing things, believe it or not, make people remember you. And you know, how fast do we scroll? And again, I'm not telling you not to do digital marketing. You need to do it. But doing the old school ways, right? Flyers. I got a mattress sale this week. Mattress closing. The business is closing. Come in and buy our mattresses and have again a gorilla outside running up and down with the twirly sign. These things bring in people. I know it sounds crazy. These things worked for years before we got digital marketing. Now, when digital marketing came, people were like, oh my God, I don't have to do all those crazy things anymore. Yeah, until that market got saturated. Now you have to do both to stand out, to beat your competition. Number five, just talked about it, local presence. Knowing that my dry cleaner is right down the street, my Italian deli is right down the street, my HVAC guy, my plumbing guy, my electrician, they're close. People like doing business with people and establishments that are in their community, that are close to them, right? How do they know that you're close? By doing these tactics, by handing out flyers. Now, as far as a B2B, how many business owners do you know that go and give out cards to other businesses? Hey, I'm John, I'm down the street, I own a local flower shop. If anybody in your family or anybody, you know, maybe are looking for a flower shop here, I'm gonna give you a couple of business cards. I'm gonna put 10% discount, especially for me. I'm gonna sign it. You can give it to your family, you can give it to great customers. I'm gonna, this is only for you, and again, it's handwritten, so you get 10% off if they come down and buy and give me the card and and, and buy flowers these old school ways of shaking hands that owner's like oh the pizza guy's like oh hey how you doing john yeah nobody does that anymore yeah so when enzo and i could say enzo because my dad's name was Ezio, when enzo right thinks about buying flowers for his beautiful wife who's he gonna go to he's gonna go to johnny's florist why a he's got a discount card b i shook his hand and said hi my name is john and do that every day after work go to a different business establishment you know what business people like doing yippity yapping Business people like talking. They like talking to their customers. Oh, did you know that guy John just opened a flower shop down? He's a pretty good guy. Came in, said hello, gave me some discount. Here, I have one of his cards. He gave me a discount card. I don't really need flowers this week, but maybe you do, right? People talk. Nobody does that anymore. Nobody does the personal, hey, I have the automotive store down the street. If you need something fixed, we're honest, we're fast. Here's my card. My name is Daryl, and I'm going to give you the best. First oil, you come in for something over $100, I'm going to give you an oil change for free. You come in, you spend over $100, I'm going to give you a tire rotation for free. Here, let me write it down. Here's my initials. Just bring the card in and we'll do it. Maybe you want to give it away to one of your good customers. You do you. I'm glad to meet you. Again, I'm John. Love the fact I'm going to come. Your pizza looks terrific. I'm going to come with my family and I'm going to um, come to your establishment. Hopefully you come to mine. Nobody does this anymore. It is the simplest way to build business, to build rapport, to build trust in your neighborhood. Nobody's doing that anymore. Establish local presence. In addition, the same on the same line. Number six, build credibility. By doing these type of things, by going and saying hello to people, by actually getting out into the community, by actually going and maybe doing sponsoring one of the local charities, right? Why? Well, A, it's good for you. You're, you know, the big guy's gonna look down on you and say, okay, he's making it into heaven, right? Maybe you're not religious, it's okay. You don't have to think that way, but it feels good, right? Giving back to people feels good. And guess what? It gives you credibility in your neighborhood. Hey, that new guy, the guy that has that auto place, yeah, he was sponsoring something for kids the other day and uh, it was awesome. He ran this 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 little, um, uh, little event at his place. He had like ponies walking around. He donated all the proceeds to the local charity, cancer society, children's thing, whatever it is, whatever to, to, to the local pet, um, uh, charity, whatever floats your boat. Those type of things 
build credibility. Those type of things make you feel good and the whole neighborhood feel good. These are things that you need to do. Finally, doing these old school things gives you a personal connection that we are so losing, right? In the day of scrolling, in the day that you walk into an establishment and nobody, nobody looks you in the eye and says, hey, how are you? I'll be right with you. I'm just with the customer. Nobody does that. You know what they do? They're on their phone. They look up, they're on their phone. Oh, until you're right in front of them and you're staring, you're glaring at them and they're scrolling. And I'm not talking about kids. I'm talking about business owners do this. Scrolling. Oh uh, yeah, wait, 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 give me give me a second. What can I get? Yeah, oh, okay, one, one second. Really? Seriously? Again, just personal connection. So you wanna scroll? Good for you, Sally. Good for you. Scroll till your scroll is screaming. But when somebody comes in your establishment or you're teaching your employees of how to treat customers, the first thing you do, the first thing you teach them, no matter what, no matter if you're on the phone, no matter if you're taking an order, no matter if you're helping a customer, no matter what, somebody walks into your establishment, you take a nanosecond, you look up and you say, right, we're a little busy, I'm sorry, thank you for coming, we're gonna be right with you, I promise you. That goes a thousand miles, right? When somebody is sick, they know you're busy, they get it, they see it. But how about just saying, I'm so sorry, we're busy, we're short staffed. Everybody knows you're short staffed, everybody is short staffed. But by giving that little personal, hey, I'm so sorry, I'm gonna be with you in a second. If you're on the phone, excuse me one second. Yeah, just, I'm gonna be right with you, I'm sorry, I'm just taking an order on the phone, I'll be right with you, I'm sorry, we're so busy, I apologize. No problem. Joe, you got it, man. And listen, if it's been four minutes, seven minutes, eight minutes, and you haven't gotten to them yet, again, you lift up your head from slicing your sub or making your coffee or cleaning your cleaning in a uh, whatever, in a daycare, if you're taking care of kids, you raise your head, I'm so sorry, I know I told you I was gonna get with you. I promise you, within a, within a minute or two, I'm gonna be with you. No problem, dude. I got it. Thank you so much for acknowledging me. Thank you so much for saying that. You know why? Nobody else does it. The whole personal connection thing is gone. Nobody cares. It's like, I'm too busy. I, why should I even acknowledge somebody? Because they're a human being. That's why, Sally. Just say hello. Did it take you that much to acknowledge someone walking through the door? No. And here's the thing, every once in a while, send somebody into your establishment, a good friend. Hey, Mike, do me a favor. Um, on Saturday, here's a, here's a gift card. Go into my store, right? Let me know, even maybe FaceTime me. I wanna see if my kids or my employees or whoever's at the front door are greeting you properly. We did this all the time at the ice cream store, but we had cameras, right? So we knew, we had friends that would be there. You know what our friends told us so many times John, Beth, we love going to your ice cream store because everybody is so polite. Everybody, as soon as you walk in the door, hey, how you doing? We're gonna get right to you. The smells, the sounds, everybody's happy. That is not easy to do. That atmosphere is not easy to culminate. And uh, between me and my wife, you know, it was hard, but you wanna do that. You need that personal touch. People wanna keep coming back to places like that. And our customers made us ridiculously successful. Why? Because of our employees, not because of me and Beth. Did we work hard? Of course. Did we create a store? Of course. Did we give quality product? Of course. But we made the kids at the store feel special, so they made the customers feel special. And that is what so many places are missing. So many people are miserable. Don't be miserable. Don't teach miserableness to your employees, right? I know it's hard, Carl. I know it's hard to pay the bills. I get it, but don't bring that to your employees. Why? Because it's just a big cycle. If you're miserable, they're miserable, your customers are miserable, all of a sudden you're out of business, okay? So 
In conclusion, as I've said before, traditional along with social and digital. Did, uh, um, traditional is not dead. It is still an outstanding way to bring in customers, intertwine them, do it all, go back to guerrilla marketing. These are the things that are going to make you stand out. These are the things that made me stand out in several of my businesses. I hope that helped. We'll see you on the next one. Thank you so much. I'm going to stand outside in a gorilla outfit. I'm going to do it again. You know, I did that. I've done that. You know, I did that. I actually did that. We'll see you on the next one. <laughs>